Alente Tambo, within Peru, is undoubtedly one of the most incredible ruins to be found anywhere on Earth. Although many people have been mystified by the site's characteristics, some even suggesting that its shelf-like construction was once created as steps for giants, its real original use, however, being no less remarkable. The so-called pre-Incas, responsible for its original build, did so with the intention of utilizing these layers of soil to slowly acclimatize plants that were once not used to a certain altitude through a process of selective breeding, eventually taking them far higher than they were ever found before, making it possible to cultivate said herbs, fruits, or vegetables within their high-altitude sanctuaries, once virtually impenetrable fortresses, so that with these newly adjusted phenotypes of plants, and with the aid of what is the subject of this video, could stay high in the mountains virtually indefinitely, self-sustained thanks to the incredible achievements of Olen Tetabo. The Inkamasana water temple, being the final piece of this now lost people's armory, for although the horticultural knowledge displayed by this lost civilization is evidence of advanced culture, their abilities to control the path of water is another of the pieces of evidence which not only proves that this people were highly capable, but were also unquestionably advanced in their execution of said feats. For although these irrigation systems or drinking water inflows are many thousands of years old, most still work to this day. Some of these water features were so well made that even modern re-inhabitors still use several of these systems as they even rival that of the modern system which would replace it, bringing water to the locations. Dr. Richard Mixod, who studied the water sources of Incamasana in Oletantabo, led a team of researchers from the University of Virginia known as the Wright Water Engineers from the Wright Paleohydrological Institute and archaeologists Arminda Gabaja Oviedo and Dr. Gordon McCowan, all of whom conducted reverse engineering in an attempt to back-engineer the remarkable achievements seen at the Water Temple. Located north of the Manuraki Canal, in the sacred valley of the Incas, at an altitude of 3,000 meters, this sophisticated water complex consists of rooms, open spaces, beautiful complex pools, ornamental fountains, waterfalls, and buried channels. These pre-Incan accomplishments display an intimate knowledge of so-called modern hydraulic principles, even building their channels in such a way as to avoid hydraulic jumps. The Water Temple's architecture and hydraulic works define Inkamasana as a high-status sanctuary for worship of water. Intricate and carefully executed cliff carvings parallel to the Water Temple add a mystical dimension to the temple's original purpose, which is currently claimed to have been the worship of water. Ancient roads also left by this same elusive group unquestionably tie Olente Tabo and the Water Temple to this once great, now lost civilization's empire. Who built the Incamasana Water Temple? How did they build it? Why is the polygonal masonry, something which ancient Peru is synonymous with, found at many of the world's ancient relics? Who were these ancient people? Where did they go? It is undoubtedly an incredible place, one which we find highly compelling. From their curious writings made upon cuneiform blocks, there are endless areas of intrigue when it comes to ancient Mesopotamia, a fascinating and rare civilization which had an equally striking appearance, often adorned with trinkets, with tightly braided, often thick flowing hair, with royals regularly depicted as giants. It is also a very special area of interest for our so-called fringe research. The reason for this is that Mesopotamia is one of those rare chapters of ancient civilization which, regardless of all previously noted, has strangely continued to be accepted by mainstream institutions, field studies apparently still flowing. As previously mentioned, this astonishing, and we feel, far older than currently claimed civilization, is drenched with marvels of seemingly impossible ancient craftsmanship many of which near impossible to explain in regards to currently claimed history. The reoccurring theme one finds when another post-Ice Age technologically regressed ancestor 
moves in to utilize these structures offered safety will, in turn, leave behind an archaeological timeline. This then allows for an inaccurate and often blatantly ignorant dating. But to muddy said waters are then met with a detailed, competent reconstruction of said lifestyles, religious beliefs, systems, etc., etc., all in regards to a permitted ancestor, rather than any details or logical explanation as to their technologies or constructions. However, as mentioned, going back to the recurring event we notice, is the briefest of these supposed builders' legacies, for when one has laid claim to an antediluvian wonder, the lack of understandings regarded the fortress's strength, or indeed how to efficiently use them, the ingenious design of some of the most impressive fortresses of Peru, Sacsayhuaman, Kulap for example, we posit, if under the control of the original constructors, would have been near impossible to evade and were completely self-sustained. Yet the academically claimed builders all seem to conveniently fold within less than a few centuries at most. However, the subject of most importance and currently the most compelling exhibits of an ancient advanced civilization is the nature of many of the artifacts, either recovered or now documented as having been depicted across much of their stone-cut artwork, and across Mesopotamia, notably the Assyrian civilization, they had achieved levels of technological sophistication simply impossible to have achieved in the brief, currently attested chronological life of said civilizations. Whether the Assyrian civilization and many others spanning ancient Mesopotamia have indeed been accurately identified, then an explanation for the array of remarkable technologies they had developed becomes a very hard area of archaeology to describe. Scuba divers, secret teachings, sophisticated levels and practices of law and healthcare, and most notably, and indeed the most vital section of the civilization's skill set, their intimate understandings that lay within their ability to create irrigation and agricultural systems which rival even those of the modern day, these tremendous abilities tend to make us suspect that either the dating of Mesopotamia is drastically off, or these feats of engineering were, like many others, adopted by this later settlement, ultimately decoded and claimed as an invention of their own. Astonishing legends of the past, accompanied by an astonishing level of sophisticated astronomical knowledge, is another crucial factor which not only indicates what we are attesting, but what we feel could have only come from an extremely old source. Tributes to which seemingly found incorporated into nearly all surviving relics. Yet, as if academia claim, this ancient civilization merely wielded stone and very later bronze tools. The question is, how did they create such astonishing ancient ruins? The multi-ton Lamassu a mysterious stone-winged horse we have covered previously on numerous occasions, it seems just like that of the so-called pre-Incas, displayed levels of sophistication, specifically around horticulture, far in advance of what we should have logically presumed to see. It is as if they had a helping hand, by a far more ancient yet highly advanced intellect somewhere within antiquity. Are these Uparts surviving remnants? memories left by a pre-cataclysmic civilization, once capable of such sophisticated irrigating and building on steep mountain land with ease, we can for now only hypothesize. It is a pursuit we find highly compelling. An official of Loristan's cultural heritage, academics of the handicrafts and tourism organizations, announced the discovery of an ancient yet highly elaborate ancient clay water transfer system, akin to an ancient aqueduct found in incredible condition during excavations in Borogir, according to a report by Mir News Agency. Irrigation systems are yet another area of still existing features which can be found to be indicative of an ancient yet highly advanced constructor. These irrigation systems, according to academic fallacy, were created by civilizations with far inferior knowledge of sewage and irrigation than modern man. Thus, the construction of any systems should of its matching with mainstream timelines 
have been of a primitive nature, with their knowledge of building said systems in its infancy, and any claimed culprit within permitted history was also far less equipped than us today. Yet alas, regardless of these obvious factors, thus, supposedly, on their first attempts, got them perfectly right the first time round. They did such a good job, in fact, that many systems within Peru in particular are still in use to this day, these supposed soft metal wielding ancestors within our own post-Ice Age permitted history being claimed as the original installers of these perfect systems. We perceive such attempted postulations as an insult to those with intelligence. Furthermore, our investigation within Pompeii, for example, although we have also often covered advanced knowledge within metallurgy in the pipeworks, having tin pipes for drinking water, yet lead for sewage, such awareness, such accomplishments, Pompeii is truly an astonishing ancient site. We also covered the sewage and irrigation systems built to withstand an enormously larger population than would ever be accepted as having once before us been possible. Yet the fact that these systems were built to withstand and are still used within even today's heavily populated towns is an undeniable reality. In regards to the rather beautiful system, unearthed in Iran, however, has predictably thrown a few surprising and for some individuals tasked with upholding current paradigms, rather uncomfortable controversial features surrounding its construction and the precision of its past function. The official Hojat Yar Mohammadi, tasked with investigating the elaborate and simply exquisite surviving example of the abilities of the ancients in regards to water manipulation. The official said that the ancient aqueduct includes a quote, smart water distribution system and was part of a historic castle. This quote, smart water distribution system, is only mentioned by this funded academic due to the public exposure the site has successfully experienced, and anyone with experience in such fields could indeed identify these truths themselves. However, no so-called official or any funded individual or institute for that matter will ever accept a drastic alteration in man's chronology. The clay pipes, known as Tampushe in Farsi, once transferred water for an ancient castle's garden. According to the official, clearly impressed with the advanced nature of the find, the big clay irrigational pottery distributed the water and removed the mud as it functioned. An incredible feat for the time, the system is claimed to have been constructed within. The system minimized the risk of blockage in the flow of water. Yet what stood out about this old system to him the most was its optimal use of water resources. Who built this incredible clay watering system? When did they build it? How did they have such advanced knowledge and abilities in regards to water manipulation? A simple garden watering system from a few centuries ago? or a once-submerged, unearthed, loved and maintained artifact, once again submerged, yet thus, when we have unearthed it yet again, found to be a marvelously preserved artifact, surviving into our age, possibly originating from a lost civilization? We found Burojard's aqueduct and the subsequent discoveries of its incredibly advanced features highly compelling. There are countless ancient ruins found throughout Sri Lanka which are all indicative of a lost technology, and thus a lost civilization having once been responsible for their creation. One of the most striking of these being the Sigiriya Mountain, an ancient stronghold made atop natural plateau, a sanctuary far away from the troubles that would have presumably been occurring below. Yet one of the most astonishing relics found within this ancient land is a rather well-hidden one. Although the water reservoir built into the Sagiria site could offer one a subtle initial clue as to their existence, one would have to investigate the surrounding environment very carefully or be given local knowledge to ever find our next ancient anomaly in question. Hidden close by to the ancient mountainous stronghold, and now almost completely submerged into the surrounding landscape, gargantuan ancient water reservoirs first documented by a Mr. Tennant from the UK 
and noted upon by William R. Corliss within one of his many volumes regarding lost civilization. Describing enormous water tanks found with the aid of the locals, all completely aligned with equally cut square blocks. One of the tanks, which the locals knew by the name Pethariacorn, has since been measured to be around 7 miles in length, 300 feet broad, with 60-foot-high earthworks along its biggest embankments. They are largely believed to have been constructed to gain complete control and subsequent mastery of irrigation throughout an impressive span of land. We approached an expert engineer to find out just what sort of feat these giant tanks would be. We received back an estimated price of around $4 million to merely construct the largest sections of the earthworks. They were undoubtedly an unimaginably large undertaking, one which we believe was beyond the capabilities of any ancient group known to modern history. Perhaps the sheer enormity of the undertaking, along with the fact that they would have been far easier to conceal than that of the Great Pyramids, for example, is a possible motive as to why there isn't more known about these marvelous groundworks, or why there is very little documented study, and why any that has been done was by independent historians. Regardless, we find these incredible, gigantic, hidden ruins highly compelling. Although much of the world has focused their attention and awe upon the unquestionably advanced ancient feet of the ancient pyramids of Giza, Mexico, along with most of southern America, also possesses many equally astonishing feats of a now lost ancient civilization. Gigantic cities perfectly created to house those who built them, along with what is probably the most significant of ruins, now known as the modern Mexico City, it was once the origins of the settlement itself, although the age is unknown, this magnificent and mysterious place was once known as Tenochtitlan. Quoted as the Venus of the Aztecs, an ancient capital of the Aztec Empire, it initially started as an isolated settlement, created on natural islands within the Lake Texcoco. What makes it special, however, is that it eventually expanded out, with the now lost builders of the site constructing an entire city's foundations complete with giant pyramidal structures upon artificially constructed floating islands. It contained the Palace of Montezuma II, said to have once consisted of over 300 rooms, as well as hundreds of other temples of considerable proportions. It was eventually destroyed by the Spanish conquistadors under Hernán Cortés in 1521. At the time, this amazing floating city had an estimated population of 400,000 people. It eventually spread over onto neighboring lakes and also the land surrounding them, covering a span of 5 square miles. It was connected to the mainland by several causeway dikes that terminated in smaller lakeside urban communities. Along with the many pyramid temples, the original construction is still highly debated clearly due to its inexplicable architectural design and the clear advanced capabilities of its creator, one which does not coincide with the modern paradigms of history. The great market in the barrio of Tlatelolco was reported by the Spaniards to have had at least 60,000 buyers and sellers on the main market day. How did a claimed primitive culture create such an astonishing artificial island city? in addition to the ancient pyramids which surrounded it. It was undoubtedly a place which we would have found highly compelling. Giza is a literal treasure trove once lost to antiquity. Due to the sheer enormity of the Great Pyramid and its two slightly smaller neighbors, it's undoubtedly the greatest ancient wonder anywhere on Earth. A smorgasbord of mysteries drenches the plateau and beyond. Throughout Egypt, incredibly intricate, accurately carved, enormous stone megaliths and surviving temples can be found. The Great Pyramid of Cheops, which contains the claimed sarcophagus of Khufu, 
which would not have fitted into the structure, this regardless of how they created such enormous yet astoundingly plumb structures, set over such a large area of space and indeed with the weight of the stones used. The global alignments to these monuments also match the known speed of light. The depth of the mysteries of ancient Egypt we have only but scratched the surface of. We do not know how the pyramids were built, and we are no closer to an explanation which is logical for why they were constructed, regardless of the illogical rubbish taught today, than when rediscovered. One said mystery is yet another curiosity surrounding water, the other namely the water controversy of the erosion of the Sphinx. The severe undulating erosion upon the walls of the Sphinx enclosure undoubtedly showed that the Sphinx had been heavily weathered long before the Sahara became a desert. Therefore, one must suspect that it could indeed be over 9,000 years old. Not knowing exactly how much rainfall there's been in the distant past, the Sphinx could indeed be far older than this. The most notable scholarly advocates, Robert Scotch, argues that the Sphinx may be far older than 12,000 years. Robert Baval and Graham Hancock proposed that the Sphinx may have been built around 10,500 BC, during the last age of Leo. Anthony West believes everything on the Giza Plateau testifies to an advanced, secure, and long-settled civilization. Therefore, he suggests that the Sphinx may have been built not during the age of Leo, but a whole processional cycle earlier, in around 36,000 BC, a date he feels is more in keeping with the history of Egypt, as chronicled by certain Egypt kings. We fortunately know from analysis that the limestone blocks dug out from there were then used within the building of nearby Sphinx Temple. Interestingly, no other site in Egypt shows the same type or degree of erosion. It pertains to a dusting of curious drainage systems, found built into, or rather just below, original temple structures. The peculiar thing regarding the enigmatic flow chambers is not only their tiny size, as if harvesting rather than to be used for ancient drainage of precipitation. However, if indeed proven for the removal of rainwater, it would defend additional alternative historical theories regarding the posit of how the Sphinx lost its nose to rain. This pushes its date of construction, however, into an era not acceptable within modern paradigm. What were these curious channels? What were they constructed for? The channels focused upon in this video can be found protruding from beneath the north side of the Sphinx Temple. These enigmatic channels have been studied and examined by a number of Egyptologists and enthusiasts alike. The diagrams created, showing inner designs of these mysterious features, have shed no light on their original purpose as if one did indeed simply perceive them as drainage systems, they are practically far too small in diameter. Additionally, this channel in particular actually angles inwards toward the temple itself, as if the creators were instead feeding fluid into the temple itself. The mystery remains unsolved, yet regardless, we find these anomalous channels highly compelling.